Maryland football gets demolished by Penn State. You are a Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, new potential hires can feel like high stakes wagers for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Maryland football gets completely outclassed in every area by a straight up more talented and better pen. I'm not going to sugarcoat this game. I'm going to be straight up and say this Penn State team just outclassed us and was better in every single category, every single part, everything that makes up their entire football team, they were better at, they were better trained at, they were better coached, they had a better mentality going into the game. Every single area I looked at, Penn State pretty much was better than the Maryland Terrapins. The Terrapins got straight up outclassed. The Terps lost 51-15 to to the 11th ranked Penn State team. And it's pretty clear we're not close to what a Penn State type of team is. We're not close to being on that type of level. And I know these past couple of weeks it's pretty clear we're not close to being that. But the reason I'm saying that is if you remember going into this year, Coach Loxley did say, I think we're ready to compete for Big Ten championships. I said, I don't think we're there yet. I think we can do some really good things. I think we can put up nine wins as a team and whatnot. But I don't think we can compete for Big Ten championships. And that has kind of proven to be true. Because to be able to compete for a Big Ten championship in this side of the Big Ten that we're in with the big dogs, with the big three, one of the best conferences in all the country, you're going to have to beat a Penn State type of team. You're going to have to beat an Ohio State type of team. And obviously that's not what we were as a program. But – It might even be a lot worse than what I thought. We got completely just straight up outclassed, out-talented, out-coached, out-played in every single spot you looked at. The Penn State Nitty Lions did better than us. Doesn't mean that the Terps couldn't have done better things. It's not like that's an excuse to say because Penn State's more talented that we couldn't have done better things on offense. We couldn't have done better things on defense. But straight up, I'm not surprised that we lost this game. I'm not surprised that we got crushed when they just have guys all over the place that outclass our guys in terms of football. And yes, we can make it up by having a better game plan, by having a better certain spots of our team by having maybe a couple trip up our sleeves or watching films more detailedly or anything like that. You can make that up in football, but it's hard to make it up a, just a straight talent deficiency that there clearly was. If you watch the game, Penn state just has clearly recruited better than us. They just had more talent than us. And it's really hard when we're doing a lot of things not well at all and not executing the right way. We're not going to be able to stay in a game with the Penn State or even keep it somewhat respectable. But like I was saying, there starts with their quarterback, Drew Aller. He made some throws against us that aren't just like normal throws that everyday quarterbacks make that I don't know if anyone we've seen on our schedule could even make. He made some special throws and even some throws that Penn State didn't catch that shows you why he was a five-star a couple of years ago and shows you why he was the number one quarterback in his class and shows you why he's going to be probably a first-round pick in next year's NFL draft. We don't have a first-round pick probably on our entire roster. They probably have like, four or five guys that are probably going to be first-round picks 
in either this year's NFL draft or the next year's NFL draft. So it's just they outclass us. They're just more talented than us, the Penn State team. If we look at quarterback, like I said, Drew Aller, 25 of 34 for 240 yards and 73% completion percentage against us and two touchdowns. It's not like a crazy stat line, but just some of the throws that he was making, you just you can see why he's going to be a top pick in the NFL draft. And it's hard for Maryland to compete with that. It is. And I've said our secondary is really good, but it's hard to compete with the guy that's going to be a first round pick probably in next year's NFL draft. And then the running back, Katron Allen and Singleton, are both going to be high level NFL guys. They're probably going to be top three, four second round picks. Those two guys are really good players. And it showed that we couldn't stop Katron Allen, who had 91 yards on 14 carries with a 6.5 average. We couldn't stop them. Those two guys are really talented. And then we look at offensive line. They completely outclassed our defensive line. If we looked at it, we had one sack the entire day. Drew Aller had all day to throw the ball, and they were able to create so many different holes in the run game. We couldn't get any pressure. It wasn't even like sometimes we would get some pressure. No, we had one sack the entire day. We couldn't get to their quarterback, Drew Aller. Their offensive line has a guy that's going in the first round of the draft who's going to be probably a top 10 pick in next year's draft, that left tackle. It's hard to pass rush when they just have bigger, stronger, more athletic dudes on the offensive line. It's really hard to win that type of game. We got outclassed up there in the trenches, which honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that we got outclassed in the trenches. That's kind of what you expect from a Maryland team. That's kind of our main deficiency when we play some of these top teams in the Big Ten. It's their offensive and defensive line. And their two tight ends are both NFL players. They completely crushed us with two touchdowns, one each. So I'm looking at what their offense did to our defense. We got outclassed. We, they're more talented than us. And I can sit here and say, like, Maryland could have done this differently. Maryland could have done that differently. But at the end of the day, I don't know if it matters. I don't know if it matters. If we saw what Slee did start the game 17 for 17, and we'll talk about Slee a little bit more later, but to start the game 17 for 17 and we're still down and they clearly have control of the game, it's clear that Penn State just straight up has more talent. And until Maryland finds a way to recruit better, and I'm not saying Maryland hasn't recruited well, it's, but Maryland has to take another step in recruiting if we ever want to – compete with this team and look at it and say that they're not in the acceleration class and the smart class while we're still in the normal class. And that's kind of how it is. We have to recruit better kids. And it's not like the Terps don't have good players like what I'm saying, but Penn State rules out top 10 classes. Ohio State, they have a top three class a lot of years. And Michigan, they roll out a bunch of really good classes. And until we recruit a little bit better on especially offensive line play and um, defensive line play, it's going to be hard to say that their team didn't outclass us. And then we look at the Penn State's defensive side of the ball. Talk about outclass. It didn't, it got worse on that side of the ball. Six sacks without their best pass rusher. Without a guy that's going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft, they still were able to get pressure basically whenever they wanted it. Chop Robinson was out, their defensive end. He's going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Could get anything they wanted the entire day. So for their best defensive player, and maybe their best player on their entire team, to just go out of the game and they still wreak havoc easily against the Maryland offensive line, it just shows that they've recruited better. They're a deeper team, and we got outclassed, and they just have a little bit more than us. And then Maryland running game, the Penn State defensive line and those linebackers, they completely stuffed our running game. And it's not like they just stuffed it. It was one of the worst days in college football history for the Maryland football running game. Rushing for negative 49 yards, we almost broke the record for the worst rushing game ever in college football history. It was it was quite, it was terrible. And you can't 
completely say that that was just Penn State doing that, and some of that can't be Maryland concepts and stuff. But overall, when you rush for negative 49 yards, it's hard for me to be like, oh, like, if we play them today, we would get a positive run game going. Like, no, they're better than us. They're straight up better than us. We're not close to this type of team. And we know the coaching situation. Josh Gadder got excuse me. Josh Gaddis better figure it out. He better figure it out. Because to rush for negative 49 yards, like I said, Penn State has a really good defense and they do some really good things. But in no world should we rush for negative 49 net worth of yards. That should never, ever happen. I don't care if Penn State is an NFL team. I don't care if they're the Chiefs. We shouldn't rush for negative 49 yards. That shouldn't happen. A lot of that has to be on coaching, on concepts, and we haven't coached these guys well enough. And then if we saw Manny Diaz, Gaddis could not figure this dude out. The defensive coordinator for Penn State drew up a ton of different, really good pressures and some concepts I would like to put into our Maryland defense who sometimes it seems pretty simple. I would love to put in some of the blitz packages that they do because when you don't have a traditional four guys that can just get to the Penn State quarterback, I would love to see some exotic blitzes and take some chances on the back end because, I mean, it's going to be really hard to win the game easily. I would love to see some of those things from Maryland. But Penn State's defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz, did some really good things and completely outcoached and outdid Gaddis overall. But I have to say my main takeaway from this game is, yes, we lost. And it's not quite that, oh, the Terps could have played a lot better and we could have won the game. Like, not really. We've lost four games in a row now. My biggest takeaway is that a Penn State team, we're not supposed to beat them right now. They're more talented, deeper, better, better coach, better team than us right now. And it sucks to say that, but that's the reality of the situation to me. And obviously we could have done better in spots, but when you're playing a team that has is going to have five or four first round picks and another probably five or four second, third round pick type of guys, it's hard for me to say that we should compete with that type of team. But since we just talked about straight negatives, let's get into some of the few bright spots that we had in the game against Penn State. I'll tell you about those few bright spots after this ad from the Athletic Brewery. Now time for your Game Changer of the Week brought to you by the Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Talia Tunga Viola, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. You don't have to worry about hangovers. I've talked to many people in the lockdown community, and they say they taste great. They're the fastest-growing non-alcoholic brewery in the U.S., so get on board. You can find Athletic Brewing Co.'s non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code Locked On at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer. Exclusion and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing. Fit for all times. All right, we've talked about a ton of negatives from the Penn State game. Let's talk about some of the few positives that we had, mainly all coming from the offense. I want to start with Talia. I don't know where we would be without Talia Tunga Viola. I don't know what we would be as a program. I don't even know if what the situation overall would be with our offense. I have no idea. But thank you for Talia Tunga Viola. He played his heart out and had a really solid game. The loss was absolutely not on Talia Tunga Viola. The loss was not even close to on Talia Tunga Viola. He went 28 of 39 for 286 yards and two touchdowns and did have an interception. He made some really good throws in the game, some really nice throws. And then I think even more so, he made some big time throws, some really good throws down the field, but he also made, he just kept keeping us in short yardage situations, just 
keep getting us the solid reads. Maybe it's not for 20 yards, but he kept getting six-yard gains, five-yard gains here, seven-yard gain there. He had a really solid game. And then he started the game 17 for 17, which tied for the most completions to start the game this season for any college football player. 17 for 17 to start the game. And we're still down. For him to start the game 17 for 17, that's us letting him down. Because there's no reason our quarterback should be 17 for 17 with about 170 yards. And we're not up in the game. It's really hard to say that. It's really hard to do that. It's really hard to go 17 for 17, and we're still looking at the game at halftime and saying, I don't really think we have a chance to win. But he kept us in the game and kept it somewhat respectable, especially in the first half when it was only 21 to 7. But, of course, our running backs couldn't convert the third and short. So he got us to third and manageable. That's a key to the game against a Penn State type of team. Keep it in third and ones. Keep it in third and twos so those pass rushers can't just line up and go after Talia. And that's what he did at the start of the game, and it straight up didn't matter. We couldn't rush for a yard. And then he was under pressure the entire day. They had six sacks on him and a ton of pressures. It seemed like every play of the game he was rolling out and was getting a hit and – He stuck in there and made some really good throws like I talked about. And for him to be under pressure and still start the game like that and still have a really solid stat line besides really the interception, which I'm not even going to get too down on him for. Like, if you're getting pressured that much and you're trying to keep your team in the game and you're trying to make some plays, it's almost impossible not to throw an interception in that situation. So overall, with the pressure that he was facing and the quality of Penn State defense – and the quality of just everything that Penn State has overall on that side of the ball and the state of the game and how almost everywhere else we got outplayed, Talia had a really good game considering all of that. And then I think some of our wide receivers did some good things. Ty Felton had some good plays down the field with four receptions for 75 yards with a long of 30 yards. And then Corey Deitches came back and had a pretty strong game. Corey Deitches caught eight catches. He had eight receptions for 60 yards, and it was by far Talia's favorite target. Just kept throwing him the ball to get into some of those third and friendly situations that I talked about. And then Caden Prather had three catches for 58 yards and made some big plays. And I've been yelling, Octavian Smith, Octavian Smith. I want to see more of Octavian Smith. And we got some Octavian Smith this game. Finally got involved with five receptions for 31 yards. And I think... I, I will give Gaddis this. He did some really good things against the Penn State defensive line because we knew, not in terms of the offensive line play, but in terms of the passing concepts, because we knew we didn't want to just let Penn State line up and start rushing our, our um, start rushing Talia. We knew we were going to have to get out the ball quick, and that's what he did. That's what Talia did. There was a, multiple screens to Octavian Smith, which I loved. You know how ex- explosive and how, um, how high I'm, I am on Octavian Smith. And so to, um, Gaddis did a really good job just calling screen plays to get the ball out fast to Octavian Smith, and he would get like six, seven, five yards to keep us in front of the change, which is extremely important to do against a Penn State-like team. So I did really like that. I don't want to act like I didn't like anything Gaddis did. I, I really loved the game plan, getting the ball out quickly to Octavian Smith, and I would like to continue to see that for the home stretch of the season because I think Octavian Smith, now that Tyrese Chambers is gone, is clearly kind of the gadget number four wide receiver outside of the top three guys, but we'll get a ton of reps. And now the kind of the whole mentality of the year kind of changes now. You're going to see a lot of, if you thought we rotated a lot before, we're going to rotate a ton of guys now because now that we're five and four, it's we're not going to kind of hold guys back in terms of freshmen. We're going to play a lot of freshmen. We're going to play a lot of different players because right now it's less. It's to them. It's kind of like 
we might as well see what we got in some of these guys. And a lot of guys are leaving the program next year. I mean, we'll talk about that more in the offseason. But guys like Octavian Smith, Shalik Knox had a catch. I wanted to point him out. Now that Chambers is gone, Shalik Knox will have to step up. He's really talented. He's going to get some run. So just expect to see a lot of different players. But overall, um, the positives on the offense, the receivers played, I thought, pretty solid. Still got to work on some drops. And Talia had a really good day. On defense, I could really only pull out Quashawn Fuller. Quashawn Fuller did some solid things, had a tackle for loss and a sack. So Quashawn Fuller had a really solid game overall. And he kind of has had an up-and-down year. At times, he's been pretty good. At times, he's been quiet. So hopefully, he can continue playing well these last couple of games. Um, and we get him back next year. So maybe he can put that together and play well at the start of next year. Maryland basketball hopefully can save the Terp fans. It's officially basketball season now. We'll talk about that after this ad from LinkedIn. These days, new potential hires can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. A lot of people need jobs right now, and if you want to find qualified candidates and someone amazing for your company, LinkedIn Jobs helps finding the right people for you to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Maryland basketball, hopefully, can save all of us. We're relying on Maryland basketball to save all of us because it is officially Maryland basketball season and college basketball season. So we will tell our focus to start focusing on Maryland basketball because we have a game tomorrow for Maryland basketball. We have two games this week, and I wanted to fit in the first two segments about football. I thought that was important after the loss to Penn State. I thought it was important that we fit in those two losses or the – we did our takeaways about the Penn State football team before getting into Maryland basketball over these next couple of days. But we have a game tomorrow against Mount St. Mary's. And Mount St. Mary's not a very good team. They went 12-20 and 20 next year. But I'm I'm super excited to see what this Terps team looks like, see what the freshmen look like, see what how it all meshes together because this is a team that a lot of people have in their top 25, a team – that has a chance to be a consistent top 25 team the entire year, a team that's supposed to make March and will be disappointing if they don't. And we have a lot of cool little players. And overall, there's a lot of excitement for where Maryland basketball is right now. And so it's officially Maryland basketball season, and they can save us from this horrible stretch of football that we're on where we absolutely can't win a game. And we started 5-0, and and now we're just fighting to get to six wins to hopefully be bull eligible Maryland basketball can save us from that and make us happy again. And that's kind of what it's been for most of the past 10, 20 years. It's Maryland basketball keeping us happy. But overall, we will definitely tilt our focus to start talking about basketball because we have a game on Friday, too, against Davidson. So we'll, of course, talk about um, Maryland football and how and their games. But Maryland basketball is going to be playing a ton of games, too. So now we're going to have a ton to talk about. But football season is starting to wind down as basketball season starts to pick up. But overall, I'm super excited to talk about Maryland basketball. I can't wait to see. So tomorrow's episode will start the day with Maryland basketball previewing the St. Mary's game and all the things you need to know and my expectations for tomorrow's game. But hopefully Maryland basketball can save us. Because we are a basketball school at the end of the day. And we thought our football team had something special going on. And maybe we could get a little bit of both worlds. Which some schools do get. Believe it or not, some schools do get some of both worlds. Like right now, Alabama. They were number one basketball team in the country last year. Um, did a lot. Had a had the number two pick in the draft and Brandon Miller. And of course, we know what Alabama football can do. And there's some other schools that are like that. And I wish Maryland was like that, but we're not there yet. But we do do basketball pretty well. And Kevin Willard's got the guys going and is 
done some really good things in recruiting. So hopefully Maryland basketball can save us. But that's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Like and subscribe. Like I said, Maryland basketball has a game tomorrow, so we'll start, start talking about that. And then also, of course, Maryland football is finishing out their season. So if you're a Maryland fan, subscribe, like and subscribe because we're talking about Maryland Terrapin sports every single day. But thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.